Hello and welcome to Twitter and Ethics, a short course that's being made available as part of Loyola University Maryland's Masters in Emerging Media program. I'm Dr. Sarah McGee, an assistant professor in the Department of Communication. Today, I'm going to enroll you in Twitter and Ethics, where we take a look at how to think about ethical ways to use Twitter in today's emerging media conscious world. So let's get started. The course is going to be very quick and consist of a few things, just a brief outline. We're going to look at what are ethics and then Twitter-specific ethics definitions we need to get started thinking about these issues. We'll examine responsible use of Twitter by both the media and the audience and consumer. We'll take a look at several issues and debate that's happened through use of Twitter on all these platforms and give you some questions to ponder couple of thoughts before you post, things to think about before you make that post or how you think about using those tweets, and then some final thoughts to wrap up this short course on Twitter and ethics. Before we begin, let me tell you a quick little bit about me. Again, I am an assistant professor of communication at Loyola University, Maryland. I am a former Emmy-winning TV news producer. I also teach uh, and research uh, news and entertainment, broadcast journalism, radio and television. I teach media ethics, of course, hence this short course, but I also teach general media ethics. I examine and research news content, and I focus a lot on pop culture and social media uh, and ethics today, especially how Twitter and other platforms are being used in the news world um, and news and entertainment. As I mentioned, we're going to start out with some brief definitions uh, to get us thinking about generally what are ethics. The definition that I teach my students and tend to go by is general ethics are a conflict of some sort between equally compelling alternatives and choices. It's not so much a right or wrong but can you justify your decision? Now, I'm not saying that there aren't certain cases where it's pretty clear there's a right or wrong, but I always like to say that no matter what decision you make, if you can justify that decision you've made, people might not always agree with you, but at least it gives you a leg to stand on for why you did what you did. So it's literally conflict between equally compelling alternatives and choices. That's a general ethics I can define it to ethics in the media um, or ethics in general. But focusing on the media, let's focus down on Twitter, the topic of this short course, and some Twitter-specific factors when we think about that general definition of ethics. There's 140 characters, so it's a big limit to information. So those equally compelling alternatives and choices are in 140 characters, what you use, what you post, what you think about. It also brings up the idea of valid or truthful sourcing, another thing to make or create conflict. How do you know who you're tweeting or retweeting or what you're tweeting is actually ethical? There's that mentality of tweet first and apologize later, not only in the media, but with a lot of people. Get it out there, immediate, what's happening, what you think, maybe without all the facts, but put it out there for people to see. And if it's wrong, you can apologize later. I personally hate this, but it is one of the, the ways of thinking today. And then, of course, it involves, in the media area, competition to be first. If you can get that information out there and be first, that means more money. It means more publicity. It doesn't always mean the greatest reputation, but that's part of when we think about how we should deal with ethics when dealing with Twitter and social media, some of the more specific characteristics that define how you make those decisions about those, or between those completely, but equally compelling alternatives and choices. And again, I like to say it's not so much a right or wrong, but that justification. So how do we use Twitter responsibly? I've broken it into two different areas, uh, some questions to consider if you are in the media or communications or communicators uh, versus when you are the audience. You can be both. You usually are both. So a couple of things when we think about how to responsibly and ethically use Twitter from the media and communications perspective, if you're putting out the information, you want to think about what should you post. What's it going to do? What impact is it going to have? What are the consequences? Think about your source. Is it reliable? Do you know that person is who he or she tweets he or she is? Is it better to be first or right? Is it better to get that information about a product or a person out there first and then maybe apologize later or be right? And where does the First Amendment play into this? This is the big issue when we think about ethics of what people post on Twitter or other social media, but especially with Twitter. Does it violate a First Amendment right if you don't put it out there? Or if you do, whose rights do? The idea of who or what would be more harmed versus how much good that tweet would do, uh, whatever the issue is, is a key ethical way to think about what, as media, you might put out there. Then when you're the audience, the other side of it, things to think about how to use Twitter responsibly, 
What about oversharing? You've heard about it, putting out too much information. Is that ethically responsible? What happens? Are you posting or tweeting opinion or fact? And what is ethical about that? Is there an ethical way? It's your First Amendment right to post an opinion on something, but is it ethical? What is the harm or good it could do? Does it violate somebody's First Amendment right? You too, are you retweeting a trustworthy source? How do you know that? How have you made sure that source is who he or she says he is? And overall credibility, not only of you posting, if you post nothing but opinion, 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 and no facts or no other evidence, what is that going to say about your credibility and about people that read your tweets or the tweets that you put out there or how you are perceived, um, especially even if an audience, you're using it as a more professional sense uh, versus a private sense. We're going to take a look at several different ethical debates that involve different elements of Twitter from different aspects, pose a few questions and get you thinking. So let's start with the Justine Sacco tweet that pretty much caused a huge controversy. Here's some basics if you forgot. She's the PR executive at the center of a digital firestorm. Justine Sacco now apologizing after this offensive tweet went viral. Going to Africa. Hope I don't get AIDS. Just kidding. I'm white. In a statement, Sacco now tells ABC News, words cannot express how sorry I am and how necessary it is for me to apologize to the people of South Africa. She was fired Saturday from her top PR job at internet giant IAC, where she repped some of the biggest names online, like Match.com, The Daily Beast, and About.com. This is one of the fastest responses and crash and burns I've ever seen from a tweet. Sacco posted the tweet Friday, just before a nearly 12-hour flight from London to Cape Town, South Africa. While she was apparently offline in midair, millions were online, anxiously waiting for her to land and see the uproar her tweet caused. The hashtag, has Justine landed yet, became an instant trend. Her former bosses at IAC calling the tweet outrageous and offensive. There are so many teachable moments here. Think before you tweet. Obviously. It's a tweet that should not have gotten out there. But what should Justine maybe have thought about before she put the tweet out there? What greater harm was done? Was there any greater good from this tweet? You can pause this tutorial if you'd like to, to take a few moments to think, maybe jot down a few things. What did you come up with? I'll tell you what I've come up with or learned from using this example in different ethics classes. In today's Twitter world, sometimes we tweet before we think, and obviously to many, that's a tweet before you think and not think about the impacts or the ethics of it. It's a pretty black and white example, I would say, because honestly, just reading that, you would think about it, but also challenge yourself to think about if you're in the moment, you're thinking, you're excited for a trip, and you're just going to tweet something. But it's something to think about because we are people that tend to say, in many cases, those that use Twitter um, and use it constantly, are tweeting out before they think. Who's it going to harm, that tweet? Is there a greater good? Let's take a look at a second one. This is another interesting look at how Twitter and hashtags and social media, but especially these hashtags, uh, had an impact on how the media covered and how audiences perceived all the events in Ferguson surrounding the Mike Brown death. Now people are taking a more peaceful approach, turning to social media with the hashtag, if they gunned me down, scrutinizing the way Brown has been portrayed in the media. The hashtag was started by lawyer CJ Lawrence, according to the BBC, who said he was disturbed by the media's choice to use an image of Brown making a hand gesture that could be seen as a gang sign. Originally, the media was using his graduation photo. The hashtag has taken off with dozens of Twitter users posting two different pictures of themselves in very different situations. So thinking along the lines of the same questions as before, where does free speech fall into the decision for people to tweet what they're seeing? I would argue that people believe they want to see and want people to know what's going on. Here's a quick way to do that. The key is how they put it out there. Yes, opinions and bias will probably fall in. It was a very emotional time, and things were happening there that I think should have been made public and we should be taking into consideration, and that the media maybe necessarily was not there to see or at least 
least not there in the capacity that the people protesting there were. But still, deciding to tweet about these things, yes, you're in the heat of the moment and you want to get it out there, especially if you're a protester or a bystander and you want this out there in today's immediate media world, but are there going to be repercussions? Who's going to be impacted? Not just the police, but the victims' families, people that have uh, different perceptions than you. What to think about and how to make that decision. So how do you make a good ethical decision with Twitter? Well, here's a couple of things to think about before you either make a tweet, you post a tweet, or before you maybe retweet something else, if you're a media person before you put something out there, or an audience member before you put something out there. Does your tweet do more help or harm? What are the consequences? What are all sides and all people that could potentially be affected? Think about the source. If you're retweeting or posting something, is that source reliable? Do you know it's not somebody pretending to be the president? Or is it Barack Obama himself? Did you consider the repercussions? Before you put that tweet out there or retweet, did you consider what could happen if somebody reads this and takes action on it or uses it or does that? Is that a good thing? Is there a downside to it? No matter how much the good side, there's usually always a downside that you need to at least consider in weighing before you make a post. Can you be held accountable for your tweet? In more and more of our Sue Happy Society today, there is more cases that are coming out about can you be held accountable? If you tweet something, even if it's not you, you retweet something, but it's wrong or it creates some kind of bad effect, what responsibility do you have in that? Can you justify that 140 characters? Thinking about what you've said, can you get a clear picture across? Is there more opinion? Should there be? What do you want to say with that tweet? And is it clear that you're making your point? And again, how could people take that point? And last but not least, do you really want to tweet or retweet something? We have a lot of those impulses that we want to just put it out there or repost or retweet. But think about that before you do. What are you doing? More harm or more good? So several final thoughts as we wrap up this short course. It's pretty true that Twitter is changing how we see and view our world, and that is changing how we think about it ethically. It becomes very easy to use 140 characters in wrong ways or ways that might not be or get the impact you think you want to have. Good and ethical tweets should consider all these factors, and it's something that's going to take a little bit to think about because the idea of tweeting, again, is to get it out there quick and fast. Don't put a lot of thought into it. And these ways of thinking can be applied to all forms of media, social and otherwise. We focused on Twitter here, but it can be applied to social media in general. To end this short course, I want to play you this quick uh, commercial, which I think says a lot about not only thinking about what you tweet and what you post, but kind of brings up some interesting things to consider for the end of our session here. I'm kind of a social media nerd. I'm also kind of a burglar. So when the people who live here posted online from tonight's game... I did what any self-respecting nerd burglar would do. I let myself in. I started selling their stuff live on the internet. But these deals won't last, so scoot your booch on over to my website and thank these people for oversharing by paying me for their stuff. Buy Matt and Shan's stuff now at MayhemSale.com. So while that video illustrates a little bit more the overall issue of oversharing on social media. Bringing it to wrap up this uh, short course, I think we need to think about how we overshare, what we say, and what we put out there, because it's going to have an effect on people other than us. So think before you tweet, think about who it's going to affect, think about what you actually want to say and put out there, and then let that impact how you conduct your online life through social media and through your tweets. And that brings us to the end of this short course. Hopefully you found some interesting ways to think about how you tweet and the ethics behind what you put out there and the impact it's going to have. This Twitter and Ethics short course is a part of Loyola University Maryland's Master's in Emerging Media program. You can find more information online. I'm Dr. Sarah McGee, and I hope you enjoyed thinking a little bit more about the ethics of Twitter.